The Centre for Electrical Energy Storage is an energy frontier research centre. It is one of 46 that was uh, established by the uh, Department of Energy in 2009 to address basic research needs and address grand scientific challenges for the 21st century. The centre is located at Argonne National Laboratory because Argonne really has a rich history in energy storage. It goes back about 50 years. We have three partners, uh, Argonne National Laboratory, the lead lab, together with two universities, Northwestern University uh, to the north of us and the University of Illinois uh, at Urbana-Champaign to the south. The mission of the centre is to undertake basic research uh, and to probe the electrochemical reactions that are occurring at the surface of electrode electrolyte interfaces in lithium ion battery systems. The other major mission of the centre is to make sure that we train the next generation of scientists uh, for uh, future developments in lithium ion battery technology. We're very interested in improving performance of lithium ion batteries and ultimately the performance is limited by the materials that are used uh, in the battery itself. The new materials that we're exploring include carbon nanotubes, graphene, uh, carbon microspheres, and silicon, including microstructured silicon. If we look at a material like a carbon nanotube, it presents a large surface area, and as a result, it can lead to very quick charging of the battery. If we look at materials like silicon, they have much higher capacity, so you can charge the battery more, i.e. store more energy in the battery. Of course, this creates a trade-off. If we look at silicon, it tends to have a shorter lifetime than carbon. It's one way to address that issue is to combine the two materials, carbon and silicon, together, hopefully achieving high capacity from the silicon component and the carbon component allowing you to have longer lifetime and stability. An important component of our work in the center is to explore methods for actually imaging the battery while it's operating, uh, so-called imaging in situ. One of the methods that we've developed to achieve this goal is called scanning ion conductance microscopy. We have other complementary techniques within the center, including in situ x-ray characterization uh, that is often uh, achieved at Argonne National Lab at the Advanced Photon Source. A battery consists of a solid electrode and liquid electrolyte. The interface between the electrode and the electrolyte is probably the least understood portion of a battery. Uh, the, that interface is where the chemical reactions take place. X-rays are, are important for looking at interfaces in batteries because X-rays are able to penetrate through the electrolyte to look at the interface even while the battery is operating. X-ray work that we do at Oregon National Labs is at a facility called the Advanced Photon Source. The advanced photon source is a hard X-ray synchrotron source. The hard X-rays allow us to penetrate through materials. The high brilliance of the advanced photon source allows us to do these measurements in real time and watch the reactions as they take place. And that gives us additional insight into what's actually happening. In our center, we have built an effective triad of collaborations with computation, synthesis, and characterization. Synthesis teams build new materials and interfaces. The characterization team probes these new materials and find out their properties, whereas the computational team understands these properties using computation. We use large-scale parallel computers. One example is carbon at the Center for Nanoscale Materials. Carbon is capable of carrying out 30 trillion operations a second. Another computer that we use is Mirror at the Leadership Computing Facility at Argonne National Lab. Mirror is the fourth largest supercomputer in the world in 2012. It is capable of carrying out 10 quadrillion computations a second. Addressing the safety issues of um, lithium-ion batteries, this is one of the major um, areas of interest uh, of the center. We have a group under the leadership of Professor Jeffrey Moore at the University of Illinois where they're looking at uh, shutdown materials uh, for lithium-ion batteries. Autonomic materials are materials that uh, take action without any human intervention. The autonomic batteries that we have in mind are basically materials that can release a healing agent over time uh, at the point that it's needed. So the release of the healing agent is triggered by some sort of event. It might be a rise in temperature, for example, or it might be some change in voltage that would cause the uh, healing agent to be released or a terminating reagent to be released if we want to shut the battery down. 
The centre really focuses on lithium batteries for transportation. I think that that is one of the overriding aspects of the centre. But having said that, if we are successful in improving the lithium-ion battery technology for electric vehicles, that technology is going to spill over into the consumer electronics area and into all other areas uh, of, where energy storage is required. The future of battery technology is bright, it's going to be exciting, but it's going to be challenging. Energy storage is critically important today. Uh, I've got no doubt that the next century is going to be about energy storage. It's, it has become a, a strategic uh, issue from an economic standpoint, from an environmental standpoint, and also just from a standpoint of national security.